Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. I've just taken delivery of my new Multifix. This is from uh, Pee Wee Tools. This is the size A version. So the issue that I've got is that the Pee Wee Tools, the inner shoulder here is 26 millimeters. The stud that comes with the BL290F lathe is a 24 millimeters. So you can see uh, it does not obviously register on this. Uh, shoulder here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily I'm going to make a sleeve that will basically expand this to 26 millimeters. Now I don't want to just make a one millimeter wall thickness sleeve from aluminium because it's going to be very very difficult to machine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to the 16 millimeter diameter in this top section here. I would take it down to 16 mil and then I'll be able to create a sleeve that will be a 16 mil to 26 mil. And that just gives me a lot more material to work with. In case I make mistakes, it's gonna be much easier to try and get it right. Now you can see the way that this stud uh, fixes into this, into this compound. Um, we have a bottom flange here of 35 mil, and that just registers and there is a set screw and that will just stop it from twisting and turning. I know a lot of the American versions of this lathe, I think they have a T-slot, but it seems like the ones in the UK here, uh, they just have this kind of like through stud with this flange set up. Now obviously in an ideal world, uh, I would just take this out, chuck it up and just turn this down to 16 mil. The problem is, is that I've this is the only thing I've got to do any sort of work holding at the moment. I was thinking maybe I'd just 3D printing a, a sleeve for it, I'm not sure if that would work or not, but I thought this would give me a good opportunity to just practice trying to make one of these again, basically from aluminium. So I know that is a very convoluted way of doing things, but yeah, it gives me a little bit of time to uh, get used to the machine and get some machining practice in as well. We've got the top section of the stud machined down to 16 millimeters, and now we're gonna put on a M16 thread. So I put on a bigger chuck here, it's got a bigger flat face that I can just get this aligned. So I'm not sure what exactly was going on there. I don't know if it was the die that is just crap because it was just a cheap one I got from Amazon. But that took me a very long time to get that thread on. This handle does thread on, but then it starts to get a little bit stiff up here. So it should be enough though to just hold the multi-fix in place while I do the machining on the actual original stud. So now we're gonna take it out, we'll flip it over and then we'll machine the bottom section of the stud. Flipped it around, faced it off. I brought the bottom part of the post down to the 35 millimeter, which is the recess in the compound here. So now all I need to do is just remove this remaining stock. So we just leave, I think it's about six millimeters for this lower cylindrical section here. So I've just got a left hand uh, bit in the tool post here and I'm gonna thread away from the chuck. Hopefully that will work. So it's the moment of truth. Uh, you can see that I've been able to make it kind of similar, but this shoulder here, which the multi-fix is gonna be sitting on, should have actually been much taller. So there's not too much registration here. And I had to use this part as well to clamp it into the four drill chuck when I swapped it around. It's not the best registration, but I'm hoping this will be enough to just keep the multi-fix in place while I machine this down. I've got a nice fit. And I think we should be able to get the multi-fix on. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere. It should, should be good enough. 
I just want to take a quick pause to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is the one-stop shop for makers and engineers, offering an extensive range of services including PCB fabrication and etching, CNC machining, 3D printing and more. Say goodbye to being limited by the tools that you have at home, PCBWay makes it easy to bring your projects to life. They cater to small quantity orders and provide fast worldwide shipping across most services. Check them out today and see how they can help with your next project. I have managed to replace the stud for the tool post with the aluminium one. I've got it locked down as best as I can. I'm not too sure if this multi-fix is still gonna swivel. There are dowping uh, location points for it to uh, position it and lock it in place, uh, but I haven't actually put them into the, uh, into the compound yet. This is literally just being uh, held down with this, this locking nut here. But we've got the aluminium one installed now. And this is the original steel one. So I've got this uh, chucked up. I'm holding it on the threaded end, which isn't the best, but I've got, just got some aluminium soft jaws wrapped around it to just protect the threads. And then I need to machine down this bit here. So this is gonna be really close to these chuck jaws here, which isn't the best. Now, I don't actually have any, any tool holders or bits that can get in very nice and tight here. Now what I would maybe use is maybe something like this, a CCMT uh, bit here, but obviously this is gonna be hitting onto this point here and I don't have any left-handed ones. So what I'm gonna do is I will try to use a parting uh, tool holder here, which is very, very small profile. It's only like two millimeters. So what I'm hoping is that I will just kind of part it in bit by bit by bit and then finish it off all with this part. Uh, and I just saw a video on, I think it was the Tumaloy YouTube channel, but they showed uh, the difference between using just a, a regular turning bit compared to a parting bit to do kind of deep grooving like this and it did just as good of a job. So this is why I'm gonna to attempt to, to use this. So let's give this a go. We'll, uh, we'll try and take this down with this parting bit here. So it worked a treat. We've taken it all down. I've got a tiny bit here, but it's just too close to these teeth to, to get rid of it. So I just have to file that little tiny bit away. So now we're gonna take it down to the final dimension. Uh, so this is currently about 20.4 mil, and I just wanna just take off that 0.4, so we've got 20 mil here uh, for the bushing. So this is a piece of EN24T. This is unfortunately the smallest diameter that I could find as, as an offcut. This is uh, about 51 millimeters in diameter, unfortunately. So I've got a lot of stock to remove of this, um, but it only needs to be about, about 30 millimeters uh, sleeve depth here. We'll bore the hole and then we will take this down to the outside diameter. So I'm gonna take it down to I think 20 millimeters inside the bore. Uh, and then the outer will be 26 millimeters. <laughs> oh my God, that is crazy. That didn't. <laughs> Holy shit, so that has, Okay, so you can't obviously cut E24T still with a high speed uh, tool bit because it has literally just grinded away the tool bit there. Oh, this project's gonna have to go on hold and I guess that I'm gonna need to buy some carbide inserts. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with this. I think I'm probably gonna have to buy a smaller diameter. I think I'm probably biting off too much here. I think if I just bought, you know, like a 30 or just a 26 diameter bit of EN, 24T here, uh, I probably would save myself a lot of time. So don't quite get, yeah, what I'm gonna do. Need to buy some carbide inserts because that is insane. It's just kind of shaved it off completely. There is a high speed steel tool bit. It's just completely ground away uh, that edge. You can see that there. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. Perhaps I wasn't using enough 
pressure. I had a quick search on Google and yeah, I mean, EN24T still is tough and I think it is recommended to use carbide tooling. We had to wait a few days, but I've, uh, I've picked up another bit of en 24 still here is very nice finish I'm guessing it's been previously machined it's just a another little off cut and thankfully this is uh, 30 millimeters in diameter so I've only got four millimeters to take as you can see there is a, a lot less stock that I've uh, got to worry about here which is definitely a good thing but I guess it's a good excuse uh, to pick up some carbide tooling I've got a few different ones here I picked up some cheap ones from AliExpress and uh, I did a lot of research. There are a huge amount of holders and inserts that you can use. I've gone with what I think is probably one of the more common ones for a small lathe. And these are CCMT bits. I've also picked up a little bit more of a premium brand one as well. This is a Kyocera, which uh, is a, a very popular brand. Using the same insert CCMT. So this is what we'll use to make the sleeve. We've only got a little bit to part off the uh, the sleeve. The height, I think it only needs to be about 20 to 30 millimeters. Uh, so we'll do this now. Hopefully it will work with carbide. So it's not the best finish, but I was able to get it cut at least. The carbide tooling worked very nicely and we've got a nice fit on the post. So now it's time to start thinking about fitting the multi-fix to the compound and getting the hole drilled for the dowel pin. I'm using some one, two, three blocks bolted together here just to create a right angle. I'm referencing off the side of the compound and then bringing the tool holder face 90 degrees to that. My thinking is that if I get the compound obviously set to zero degrees when it's on the lathe, that tool holder face should be close to parallel with the chuck face. Now what I see a lot of people doing is they just get the uh, tool holder they get it fitted onto the multifix and then you bring it up to the chuck and you can obviously just swivel the compound around to make sure that you're getting it parallel with the chuck. But this is just to get me into the rough position that I need for it. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have a long enough drill bit to drill all the way through. You can see that I'm just hitting the, uh, the top of the threaded stud there. So what I did is I just drilled a few millimeters down just to mark the position of it. And then I was hoping that I could remove the multifix and then drill all the way through but yeah i didn't think about the fact that the threaded stud was still there so i had to take the entire thing off i had to lose the position uh, and then i had to get it set up again it's not too much of an issue because i do have a compound table on this drill press so i've got very nice precise uh, movement of the holder here. So I'm just drilling it with a 5.5 millimeter drill bit, and then I'm coming in with a six mil reamer. We got the hole drilled. Uh, I was massively overthinking and overcomplicating the process of locating it. Uh, doing it on the drill press, uh, it turned out fine. I've got a nice suction pop. So this is almost ready to start using. So this now locates in place. Last thing to do is we just need to bore this out to 16 millimeters so we can uh, put this over the uh, the original 16 mil stud. Uh, I think the what comes with PE tools, this A size, I think this is for a 10 or 12 mil uh, post. So let's enlarge this now. So let's get it put back together. 
See the sleeve goes on here. I was thinking of using some Loctite just to keep this in place, but I wouldn't be able to take this post out because this is just a little bit bigger than, than the hole in this top compound slide here. So I'll just leave it loose. I don't think it really matters. Now with the pin, from doing some research, it's not actually necessary to use it. Just locking it down with a nut is enough. The bottom of the multifix, it has a, a screw pattern engraved into it. These are not actually concentric rings. This is one line that is in a spiral here. And as you tighten it down, over time you will see that it will actually start to bite into the metal. So it's kind of got its own locking mechanism built into the multifix. So the pin isn't actually necessary. You know, some people say that without the pin, if you ever do crash it, you know, you're more likely to twist the multifix, which could prevent some sort of, you know, catastrophic failure with the machine which I kind of agree with. I think for a beginner, you know, I would probably rather have it set up like this without the pin. So if I crash it and it spins, well, you know, that's not the end of the world. But I'm not gonna take my own advice. Uh, I've gone through all the effort to, to get this set up and machine, so I'm going to keep it in there. So all that's left to do now is to put on the, the top face plate, and then we've got the, the top part here, which we can set to zero, and then we will just fasten it down. I think I need to do something with the handle here because uh, it gets in the way and it's kind of placed really awkwardly. But now we've got it successfully installed. I mean, sliding these on and off is relatively easy. And then to lock it, you wanna push it. I see a lot of people pulling it this way, um, but it's not actually designed like that. It is meant to be pushed to, to be locked. So for the short time that I've had this, uh, I've used it for just a few operations to get this thing installed. And I've just used it for a few other bits and bobs recently in the last few days. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love this thing. Being able to just take it on and off and, and the repeatability of it is really, really nice. This is definitely an essential upgrade uh, to, to any hobby lathe owner. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll put a link to the Pee Wee Tools website so you can see uh, you know, the packages that are available for these type of things. And if you're wondering the, the model that you need, uh, just email Peter, he's really, really helpful. And he replies very, very quickly. So thank you for watching. Uh, that is it for today. I will catch you later.